Oh, I'll fix this thing up here. Okay, it's another hot day here in the Eastern Cape. Ah, or South Africa. Where's my glasses? Where's my glasses? What do I have? Oh, let me put these on. There's different ones on. What the heck? Okay, look. I just, I usually I'm looking on, you know, my little phone there, getting information or whatever, listening to stuff. And the Oscars happened last night, I guess. And, um, so, you know, that I, it's, you know nobody watches the whole Oscar show anymore. They can keep it as long as they want because what people do is they just, what do they do? They chop it up. And then, you know, you just wake up and put on things. I'm, I was looking for if they had a musical performance from Black Panther or something like that, but I didn't find anything like that. But Ruth Carter got a little Oscar. And Spike Lee got, got an Oscar for producing. And I don't know, stuff happened, so it was good. But then immediately I look, I'm going like, wait. Because the images, they start, like when they give Ruth Carter the, the thing, there was a... The, sister, the, 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 the woman is dressed up in that movie that had favorite, whatever that movie was in from England, really good thing, somebody dressed up like that. And then the guy next to her was a black guy, beard and everything like that. He's got a frock on too. And I'm going, like, well, I didn't see the movie. I, is there black people in, in the movie wearing frocks? I don't know. Anyway, so I wasn't paying attention. Well, going under the, then, then a little bit later, I'm looking on my phone, and I see the red carpet thing. I'm going, like, wait a second, there's this brother. <laughs> <laughs> the brother, he got the text on, the, the you know te the text, the tux on, and 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 he's wearing a, a gown, you know. I'm going like, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> then I realized, then of course I'm saying, okay, it's Hollywood, you know, they have a whole cabal, a little circle there, you know, you. Know, <laughs> mm. Let me say, and of course they're now taking over. When I say they, I actually mean uh, the, the the sexual ambiguities people. <laughs> people have sexual ambiguity, or maybe they defined it now, and so they think. But it's out of uh, out of biology. Let's put it that way, you know. So I won't get into holding. I'm not going to go, or you know, uh, they say I'm not going to go or uh, heterophobic on you or you know, something like that. But here's the thing. Here's what I'm looking at. Um, when I first did theater in the, you know, I went to, uh, I was, my first professional, my first theater thing ever was I was in the intermediate class of Negro Ensemble Company from 1967 to 1970, really, in late, well, 70 when I went into the Air Force. And when I was there, it was amazing. We had a lot of, I mean, my first teacher was, was Michael Schultz, you know, uh, we had, but look, there's a, you know, that's, that's where, you know, uh, you know, all these people that you know, now Robert Hooks, all these, you know, people, well, you don't know these people, Arthur French, all these old time actors, they were there. Okay, so then I go away, go into the Air Force, and I go to school, and I'm figuring I'm coming back home. Theater, theater's my first love, you know, and, and I'm actually, you know, I'm staying, uh, uh, theater's my first love. So I come back 10 years later, basically, after going to, to, to the military and going to school, and just, you know, whatever, I come back to New York. And lo and behold, in that 10 period of time, most of those actors that, that were there, you know, even my best teacher, Edmund Cambridge, he, he's in Hollywood, uh, you know, training people. And Ed was the, oh, no, Ed training Hollywood, you know. So it's like that crew sort of left. And what was, what was happening in, in, the, in the city at the time, we talked about the early 80s, there was a, a basically, a, what was happening was uh, nepotism was happening a lot in, in theater, so my black theater, I guess. And also, get out of here, fly. And also, uh, the gay cabal, if you was, was happening, um, and so it was kind of. Interesting. I was, but the scene was. It was so. They were jockeying and doing some favor. Only if you were sleeping with this person, that, that, that. Then of course you had the cocaine happening. You know, it was all kinds of things, and I was just through with that scene. So I sort of retreated into an, into radio, really, uh, uh, because I, I did radio when I was. Uh, uh, there was that ten years I was missing. I, I was exposed to radio, so that's what happened. Um, so you know, so I'm cool into that. But now I find that the same thing has happened. I haven't, I don't, I haven't been to Hollywood or, or close. I went in that area. I did a workshop one time in Santa Barbara. That was years ago at the University University of Santa Barbara, uh, where 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 I stayed with uh, Cedric Robinson or, sorry, and, and Elizabeth Robinson, um, Peace and Blessings on the Eternal. So Cedric Robinson, the guy that did uh, the great great book, book uh, Black Marxism. But look at Cedric. Anyway, uh, so as close I ever got down to that thing. I, Friends with they've gone and live in that area, but from what I understand, and I haven't been there. The only, my only exposure is, I guess I'm a little tainted because I'm, I just I like 5150. That's one of my favorite shows. You know, Corey Booker and 51 Corey and, and and Darlene 5150. Check it out if you can. 
and he's always talking about this gay cabal or this, you know, how gay people are taking over Hollywood and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, I'm not in that world, so I don't, what, 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 what do I care, you know? So when I see all this happening, this is going, I'm rambling a bunch of places to try to connect all these dots. I started to think, when I see this rocking and now and understanding the, 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 the sexual ambiguity, the, 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 the whoever <laughs> is taking over and they're getting their way, whatever have you. And then we have a thing where you have uh, this grouping, all of a sudden when they speak, they sort of try to speak for humanity or speak, uh, say if they're black people, they're trying to speak for black people. And you go, wait a second, mm, you're speaking for black people, but you come from this, you're, you're, you're speaking for black people from the, from, from the, the prism or, or the, the viewpoint of this community that you exist in. Let me give you an idea, let me give you a historic idea. Let me explain what I'm saying. Okay, the most famous, you know, for people who can understand, remember whatever, could keep, what we keep on talking about this, is, is Malcolm and Martin. Malcolm versus Martin. And here's the thing that people don't understand. There's the Martin Luther King, the early Martin Luther King, you know, before the Nobel Prize, let's put it that way. Then there's the king, uh, uh, then there's the king who, uh, who basically started to lead peoples, right? Um, and, 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 that, and that king, <clears throat> how should I say this? Well, anyway, that king is the one that all of a sudden realized, hey, I don't want to get deliver my black people who was this following into, you know, a burning house. That was that king, and then then he went to the people, whatever had it. Um, Malcolm X, same thing. If you had Malcolm, listen to Malcolm. Then you have when he gets out of jail. So you have the Malcolm X part. Then you have the El Haj uh, Malik El Shabazz, right? There's a two different Ma 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 Malcolm X's, there's two different kings. When King was uh, before the prize, he had all, the, the, all, the, all of his backing, whatever, for that civil rights movement, that kind of civil rights movement, he had to, he basically talked with them and got marching orders. And so he came out and talked to the world according to what they were thinking. Then we had his own mind, you know what I mean, with the poor people, whatever. They no longer supported him, really. You know, they, people didn't really like King Nettie. I mean, when he's talking about against Vietnam and the government is doing this and blah, 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 they didn't really like him. So anyway, so that was a different king speaking. He wasn't speaking from the Southern, say, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference kind of mentality. He's speaking from now a humane mentality, right? Same thing for Malcolm. People, people forget. People keep throwing up these things, and it's almost driving me crazy. They throw up stuff. You have to understand. When Malcolm X was Malcolm X, he was the he, what was he? The spokesman for the Nation of Islam. He was speaking. In other words, he talked to the nation. He got his marching orders from Elijah Muhammad. So when he was speaking, he was speaking from the perspective of Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam. Is that, is that so hard to understand? So a lot of those things that he that he would say and people put up this blah 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 blah. They're dated and they they come out of that thing. When Malcolm went, did um, the, left the nation and went did the Hajj and came back, El Hajj El Shabazz, but he come. He clearly said there's a religious fraction right there. Then there's this other thing, this political uh, thing, the, the, you know, organization of African American youth. Anyway, the point is, that's a different Malcolm. It's like the king, the last year of his life, and the Malcolm, the year, last year of his life, was almost like the same person, or getting towards being the same person. So when we put out these historical tropes and put out these things, whatever happened, which, which, Malcolm, are we, which Malcolm are you talking about? You Martin Luther, which Martin Luther? So, 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 now, the reason I'm bringing this all together is because when folks come to their little base and they haven't grown beyond their base or beyond where they're getting their marching orders from, they're speaking and they try to get their get more power by saying, I'm speaking for all people, or this is, I'm representing black people. Well, they're gonna, there's going to be a lot of pushback on this. A lot of pushback on this. It's going to be. It's going to get really, really, I don't want to say ugly, but it's going to be, hey, they, let me put it this way. Okay, call me whatever you want to have to say it this way. Talk about drama, honey, there's going to be a lot of drama. Anyway, this is just a little observation because I, I was, I'm fascinated with the, the next fight. <laughs> it's going to be, <laughs> well, message, well, well, your observation for me, T from the Patterson's taking the trenches to bed, letting you know what I only suspect. Woo, Hollywood.